Hey guys, it's your buddy Keith here at Essex Recording Studios in England, and I've got a 1978 Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray. Super early model, second year in business for Ernie Ball Music Man, to my knowledge. And uh, yeah, 76 was the first serial number that I found, and this one's a 78. And boy, has it stood the test of time. There's one thing that really impresses me about these vintage Ernie Balls, and they are built like tanks. Their hardware is amazing, and they're, they're kind of like the Porsche 911 of bases. The design is rock solid. The build quality is rock solid. You don't really need to mess with it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And there's not much that's really changed with these bases over the years. This is an iconic design and sound. The hardware, as you can see, I mean, for being 40 years old, this is a 40 year old base. This hardware looks really good. Spoke wheel, truss rod adjustment, way ahead of its time. Just a really good looking instrument. For the bridge, we've got an 88 uh, Ernie Balls thing right here and the serial number's there in the bridge. But on the older models, kind of more like a Fender style neck plate, you can see there's the serial number there, 8090. And I think it's musicman.org, but if you just Google musicman serial numbers, you'll see what, uh, what the deal is with that. String through construction, excellent resonance. And you'll see a couple stickers here, Audio Hire and Tickle. Let me tell you what the story is with that. That has to do with this giant flight case fitted for this instrument. And all of these other flight cases here and in the hallway. This bass came from the number one, probably the only to my knowledge, but certainly the one that everyone used, um, Premium Instrument Hire Company in London. Any A-list celebrity band, recording studio, film studio that needed a top-end instrument came to this company, which became this company, which now took over and, and has uh, FX Music. FX Audio, FX Music, they're the only company you can go to to rent uh, instruments like this in London. And what you'd have is you'd have... Uh, maybe a backing band flies over from America, they don't have all of their gear, something breaks, something goes missing, they want a different sound, maybe they're recording. Uh, this is where they would go to. And they'd say, okay, we want a four-string Music Man bass. So this has passed through many hands. It's been kept, yes, it's got some boo-boos and scars, battle scars from 40 years of, of life as a workhorse in the industry, but it's been maintained to a high standard, and that's the only way it could be used for 40 years. Great instrument, great build quality, and expertly maintained. I mean, when you see this case, this thing is serious, and it's very heavy. There are a lot of stickers on it. This is the last one we, we found, and this is for an artist called Finn... Oh, let's get in focus, guys. Finn Boxer. 28th September 2014. So you can see it's been in use right up until relatively recently. The instrument then went back to the owner of uh, Audio Hire, who essentially kept his roster and collection of instruments, but sold off the business. So um, he took the instruments back eventually, and we bought the whole lot. Very, very cool. We asked for specific names, and he just said the, the list is so long, it, it would be impossible. But anyone and everyone who was anybody that ever hired instruments in the UK, in London especially, it came from this company. So you can just use your imagination about the history and the hands that would have touched this base over the past 40 years here in the UK. Awesome. And it's not like they had 10 Ernie Ball Music Mans. This was the 
Ernie Ball Music Band. This was it. This was the one for the company. So I hope that gives you a good idea of what the bass is like in person. I'm going to flip it over one more time here to show you this neck. Nice, unfinished, very fast, very smooth neck. The Music Man tuners, famous tuners. And it's just very well aged, relic, road worn, whatever you want to call it. It's got the authentic patina, tons of mojo, and an awesome story behind it. The stickers, you just peel them off. I've left them on just to give you a, the narrative of the story and the history behind it. The flight case, we're going to keep this at the studio and we're going to use it. Uh, it will go up for sale in our Reverb store and on our website, www.essexrecordingstudios.com. Go to the shop section. There's guitars, there's basses. It will be there. But uh, we're going to use it here in the meantime. If you buy it, if you're in the UK, you'll probably get the flight case. We can probably work that out. If you're outside of the UK, um, it's available, but it's going to be expensive to have with the shipping. You know, you're probably looking at another 125, 150 British pounds. We'll have to look at the weight. But just fair warning, because I know a lot of people are going to be asking about it. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thanks for hanging out with me and checking out this wicked Ernie Ball. Really appreciate it. It's a great way to start off a Monday. I've got a lot more videos to do from the same collection. If you look at the few we posted yesterday, it was a J200 artist, 1981 Gibson acoustic. We posted a, uh, we're posting a 78 Les Paul Standard right now. And, oh, really cool, a Steinberger L2 bass. Those are the ones with no headstock, headless basses. And again, just a fraction. I gotta go drive like three hours today to go pick up a 74 Les Paul standard that's gorgeous from a hair salon, believe it or not, in Stratford upon Avon. That's where Shakespeare's from. So, I'm gonna have a busy day today, but you're gonna see a lot more videos today. And if you look, I've been pretty consistent, guys. Pretty much every day, every other day, you've been getting new videos of totally different, totally cool guitars and basses. So, Thanks for helping grow the community. Click subscribe. Tell your friends. If you've got a buddy who's just getting into bass, just getting into guitar, tell him to check out the channel. Click subscribe. You'll learn a lot from, uh, from these videos. Seeing all these different options, these specs. You can see a lot how instruments have evolved over the past 40 years. What the design trends have been. You know, where they started out, where they are now. And you can read the comments and there's so many really knowledgeable people. Way more knowledgeable than me who are generous enough to take their time and comment and give information. So we're growing a community here, guys, where we can learn a lot about all of these cool instruments and see just what they look like up close and in great detail. And especially in this day and age where so much stuff is faked, I think it's, it's only, uh, you know, we're not far away from the day where all these vintage guitars are going to start getting faked by uh, by the Chinese, you've got 59 Les Pauls selling for a quarter million dollars. It's, it's gonna happen, guys. So these videos, I think, will be really important in showing what the real, authentic instruments of the era look like. You know, what the screws look like, what the bolt patterns are, what the strap buttons look like. How does one properly age? You know, what's, what's a real 40-year-old patina look like on an instrument? I'm hoping this will be helpful. It won't be helpful to everyone, but I don't think there's many people, if anybody, doing this kind of thing on YouTube. So I'm going to do it for you guys. All right. I'm going to shut up now. Please click subscribe to the channel. Go to Facebook, Essex Recording Studios. Give us a like. Give us a five-star review. Really appreciate that, guys. And I will see you soon in the next video. Adios.